As a chosen one of God, you carry a divine purpose that stretches far beyond what the eye can see or the world can comprehend. The enemy knows this well, which is why Satan works tirelessly to ensure that you never realize the fullness of your identity in Christ. His greatest fear is not simply who you are now, but who you will become when you step into the truth of God's calling for your life. When you recognize your identity as a child of God, chosen and set apart, you begin to live with a heavenly authority that disrupts the kingdom of darkness. This is what Satan seeks to prevent at all costs. From the moment you were born, you were marked by God for greatness in his kingdom. You were chosen to carry his love, his truth, and his power into the world. Satan knows that if you grasp this reality, you will begin to operate in the victory already won for you through Christ's sacrifice. He works through lies, insecurities, and distractions, planting seeds of doubt so that you question your worth and calling. But make no mistake, his aim is to keep you from stepping into the fullness of your identity. Because when you do, you become a force of light in a world filled with darkness. Satan doesn't want you to realize that you are chosen, empowered, and equipped by God to fulfill a unique purpose that only you can carry out. The moment you fully embrace this truth, his grip loosens, and your impact for God's kingdom grows. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. When you live with this knowledge, you move with confidence, faith, and authority, causing the enemy to tremble. Satan's greatest fear is you walking boldly in the identity God has given you as his chosen one. Please press like and type out your first name followed by the words I was choosing. I believe in God. Amen. When we speak or write something, it's like we're talking directly to God. So let's make our faith known right here in the comments. Just your first name and that special phrase, I believe in God. Amen. God chose me. C.S. Lewis believed that one of Satan's greatest tactics is to prevent believers from realizing their true identity in Christ. In his works, particularly the Screwtape Letters, Lewis highlights how the enemy uses lies, distractions, and worldly temptations to cloud believers' understanding of their divine worth. Lewis taught that Satan seeks to keep people spiritually blind so they remain unaware of the power and freedom that come from knowing they are children of God. For Lewis, realizing one's true identity in God is pivotal for living a victorious Christian life. He believed that when believers grasp their eternal value and purpose, they resist the enemy's attacks and live out their God-given potential, something Satan desperately tries to prevent. When you realize who you truly are in God, who will be afraid of you most? Satan fears the moment you wake up to your divine identity. The moment you understand the power, authority, and purpose God has placed inside of you. You know, Satan's strategy is rooted in deception. His mission is to keep you blind to the truth of who you are in God, because the moment you awaken to your identity in Christ, you become unstoppable. He knows that once you grasp the fullness of your God-given authority, his schemes can no longer hold you back. So as we go into this message, open your heart and mind because today we're going to expose the lies and step boldly into the truth of who you really are in God. Satan always wants to plant the following signs in your head to weaken you and from there they can easily dominate you. Be alert to recognize them. The first sign the enemy uses to keep you from realizing your identity is distraction from God's voice. Oh, how the enemy loves to clutter your life with noise. He'll flood your day with endless tasks, social media obligations, and all sorts of distractions that drown out the voice of God. The enemy knows that if you can hear God, if you can just spend a moment in his presence, it will remind you of who you are. It will realign your spirit with your creator's purpose for your life. Satan does everything in his power to keep you so busy, so overwhelmed with the cares of this world that you don't have time to be still and know that he is God, Psalm 4610. But let me tell you something, God is always speaking. The question is, are you listening? Are you tuning your ear to the frequency of heaven? Or are you allowing the distractions of the world to pull you away from divine revelation? Don't let the enemy rob you of the moments where God affirms your identity and speaks life into your spirit. Silence the noise, push past the distractions, and get into God's presence. There you will find clarity about who you are in Him. 
The second sign is this self-doubt and insecurity. You begin to question whether you are worthy, whether you are enough, whether God could truly have a plan for someone like you. But understand this, the devil is a liar. He fears the power and potential inside you. He knows that if you ever tap into the fullness of who you are in Christ, you would become an unstoppable force for the kingdom of God. That's why he stirs up those insecurities, trying to make you believe that your flaws, your past, and your weaknesses are greater than God's power within you. But I hear the Spirit of God saying, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. The very thing Satan uses to make you doubt yourself is what God will use to display his strength in your life. You are not defined by your insecurities, you are defined by the God who called you. Besides, one of the most deceptive tools of the enemy, constant comparison, Satan loves to make you look at other people's lives and think that what they have is what you need. He wants you to feel either superior or inferior based on worldly standards. But let me tell you today, comparison is a thief. It robs you of joy, of purpose, and of the unique calling that God has placed on your life. The Bible says in Galatians 6.4, each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. God didn't create you to be like anyone else. He made you uniquely for His purpose. When you start comparing, you lose sight of who God says you are. You start measuring yourself by earthly standards instead of heavenly ones. But I declare to you today, stop looking at what other people are doing and start focusing on what God is doing in you. You are enough in Christ. You are perfectly designed for the assignment He has given you. Then there is fear of failure, a weapon of the enemy that is tailor-made to stop you in your tracks. How many of you have felt the grip of fear so strong that it kept you from moving forward in what God called you to do? You fear stepping out, you fear taking risks, you fear failing, but let me tell you something today, fear is a liar. And failure is not fatal when you are in Christ. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Satan knows that if he can paralyze you with fear, you won't step into the assignments God has set before you. He wants you to believe that failure defines you, but I'm here to remind you that failure is merely a part of God's process. Every failure is an opportunity for God to show His faithfulness, to strengthen your character, and to prepare you for the next level of glory. Don't let fear stop you from becoming who God has destined you to be. You are victorious not because you are perfect, but because Christ is perfect in you. Sign number five, negative self-talk. The enemy of your soul loves to play with your thoughts, sowing seeds of doubt, insecurity, and unworthiness. He'll whisper in your ear, you're not good enough, you'll not feel enough, you'll never succeed. Who do you think you are? And if you're not careful, you'll start believing the lies. You'll let these thoughts echo in your mind, replaying them until they drown out the voice of God. But let me tell you something, this negative self-talk is not from God. In fact, it is a weapon of the enemy to make you forget your worth in Christ. You see, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2.10, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That means you are crafted with purpose, destined for greatness, and no amount of failure, no amount of inadequacy can change what God has already spoken over you. Don't let the devil's lies define your reality. You are enough because God has called you enough. You are worthy because Christ's blood has made you worthy. But Satan knows, oh, he knows if he can get you to question your worth, he can get you to doubt your calling. He wants you to believe you are your failures, your mistakes, your shortcomings. But let me tell you, you are not what you did. You are who God says you are. It is written in Romans 8.37, and all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. That means you're not just scraping by, you're not just surviving, you're conquering. But you'll never know that if you let the enemy's negative self-talk cloud your mind, it's time to silence those lies and replace them with the truth of who you are in God. The sixth sign is spiritual apathy and weariness. 
when you are on the verge of a breakthrough, when you are walking in the fullness of your purpose, Satan will do everything in his power to drain your energy, to make you spiritually tired. He'll whisper to you, what's the point? Why keep praying? Why keep believing he wants to make you weary so that you give up on what God has promised? But the Bible says in Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Satan fears your perseverance because he knows that on the other side of your weariness is a blessing. He knows that if you keep pressing, you will break through into a new level of anointing and purpose. So when you feel spiritually drained, remember that God is your strength. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Don't let weariness steal your purpose. Rise up for your strength comes from the Lord. Sign number seven, the illusion of self-sufficiency. Now here's another tactic the enemy uses that might be harder to spot because it doesn't look like an attack. Satan will try to convince you that you don't need God, that you can do it all on your own. He'll use pride to puff you up, to make you think that your talents, gifts, and abilities are all you need to make it through life. Slowly, without even realizing it, you'll begin to rely more on your own strength than on God's. But let me tell you, the moment you think you don't need God is the moment the enemy has you right where he wants you. The Bible says in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Did you hear that? Apart from God, you can do nothing. Satan doesn't want you to realize that your true power comes not from your abilities, but from your dependence on God. He doesn't want you to tap into the strength of the Holy Spirit, because when you do, there's nothing he can do to stop you. The enemy uses the illusion of self-sufficiency to disconnect you from the very source of your power. But we are not self-made, we are God-made. We are not independent, we are fully dependent on the Lord. And it is in that dependence that we find true strength. Philippians 4.13 declares, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, not some things, not a few things, but all things through Christ. So don't be fooled by the lie of self-sufficiency. Stay rooted in God and you will bear much fruit. Sign number eight, isolation from fellowship. Oh, I want you to hear me clearly today because one of the most effective strategies the enemy uses to break you down is isolation. You see, he knows that when you are in fellowship with other believers, you are strengthened. He knows that when you are surrounded by people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, they will encourage you, lift you up, and remind you of your true identity. So what does he do? He isolates you. He makes you feel like no one understands you, like no one cares. He pushes you into the shadows where loneliness becomes a prison. And in that prison of isolation, the devil will whisper all sorts of lies. You're forgotten, you're unloved, you're alone. But let me remind you of Proverbs 27, 17, which says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. You are not meant to walk this journey alone. God designed us to be in community, to build each other up to pray for one another, to fight for one another in the spirit. When you're isolated, you become more vulnerable to the enemy's attacks. Don't let the devil convince you that you are better off alone, that you don't need fellowship. The truth is, we are stronger together. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4.12, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. When we come together in Christ, we are unbreakable. It's time to break out of isolation and step into the fellowship that God has designed for your growth and strength. Sign number nine, identity confusion. Oh, how the enemy loves to blur the lines of who you are. He will have you questioning your purpose, doubting your calling and feeling lost. He'll make you feel like you have no direction, like you're just wandering through life without meaning. If you don't know who you are, how can you fulfill the purpose God has for you? Satan thrives in the murky waters of confusion because in that fog you forget that you are a child of God. You forget that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. But let me remind you of what God says in 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. 
That's who you are. You are not lost. You are not aimless. God has chosen you, set you apart, and given you a purpose. You are his special possession called to declare his praises. So when the enemy comes to confuse your identity, to make you feel like you don't belong, stand firm in the knowledge that you are God's and he has a plan for your life. Don't allow Satan to rob you of your divine identity. Sign number 10, confusion about your calling. Another weapon Satan wields against us is confusion, specifically confusion about your calling. If the enemy can't make you compromise, he will try to make you doubt who you are and what you were called to do. He will plant seeds of doubt, uncertainty, and external pressures to cause you to question the very gifts and talents God has placed within you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Yet the enemy thrives on confusion. He wants you to look around at others and compare your journey to theirs, to feel as though you're not where you're supposed to be, to question if God really called you at all. But hear me, confusion is a distraction. Satan knows that if you are unsure of your calling, you won't have the confidence to pursue it with boldness. And if he can keep you from walking to your full potential, he can limit the impact you were meant to have. But God has already equipped you for the purpose he has for you. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The enemy knows this, and that's why he tries to confuse you about it. Remember, Satan doesn't want you to realize who you are in God, because once you embrace your identity in Christ, you walk in the authority and freedom that he cannot defeat. You have been redeemed, forgiven, and called by name. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, Ephesians 2.10. Remember, the enemy's attacks are not a sign of defeat, they are a sign of fear because he knows the power of God working through you. So as we prepare to pray, remember this Satan can try to block your view of your true identity, but he can never strip you of who you are in God. It's time to step into the light, to reject the lies, and to walk boldly in your divine calling. Do you feel like a chosen one walking a path less traveled? Share your experiences, subscribe, and continue in the comments below. God is speaking powerfully in this season, and you don't want to miss the words he is releasing to strengthen, encourage, and uplift his chosen ones. When you subscribe, you are stepping into a community of believers committed to walking out their faith together, supporting one another through trials, and celebrating the victories that God brings. By liking, you're helping us spread blessings to more people right here. Jesus taught us to believe in the power of prayer, saying, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Let this belief rise up within you as we come together to invite God's miracle blessings into our lives. Join me in this moment of prayer, knowing that even when the answers seem delayed, God is still moving in powerful ways to bring his goodness into every area of our lives. Heavenly Father, creator of all things, I come before you in awe. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the one who knows the end from the beginning. Your power is beyond what we can comprehend, and your mercy is infinite. You stand as the King over all, and I lift up your holy name. Today we recognize that there is no limit to your ability to bless and transform our lives. Lord, you are my stronghold, my protector, my ever-present help in times of trouble. I seek refuge in you, for you are my shield and my source of salvation. May your kingdom be established in every corner of my life. May your will be done, not only in heaven, but here on earth and in my daily walk. I come before you open-hearted and ready to receive all that you have in store for me. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for waking me up today with purpose. Every moment is a testimony of your grace. I praise you for your faithfulness and I offer you my heart, my life, and my gratitude. I place everything I have and everything I hope for in your hands, knowing you are the source of every blessing. I thank you, Father, for the simple joys and the unseen blessings for the love of my family, the encouragement of friends, and for the little things that make each day brighter. You've placed people in my life who bring me joy, and for that I give you all the glory. Help me to recognize these blessings daily and not take them for granted. 
Lord, your love is unmatched and your forgiveness is unending. You have shown me more grace than I deserve and for that I am forever thankful. Help me, Father, to extend the same love and forgiveness to those around me, to be a reflection of your mercy in all my interactions. Today I seek your divine wisdom. Guide my steps, Lord, in every decision I make. Let my thoughts be aligned with your truth. I trust you to direct my path, and I pray that you give me the clarity to see the way you have set before me. Teach me to listen to your voice above all others, and give me the courage to follow where you lead, even when the road is uncertain. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, humbling ourselves in your mighty presence, acknowledging that you alone are our creator, our strength, and our sustainer. Father, in this moment, I lift up every individual who is tuning in, every heart that is longing to discover the fullness of who they are in you. I pray, Lord, that you would open their eyes, that they may see beyond the lies, the distractions, and the confusion that the enemy has tried to sow into their spirits. Satan does not want them to realize their divine identity, but we know that in Christ they are chosen, called, and anointed for great things. I ask, O oh God, that you reveal to them the depth of their purpose in your kingdom, that they may walk boldly, confidently, and unapologetically in the truth of who they are. Lord, I ask for divine strength, strength to rise above the attacks of the enemy, to reject every whisper of unworthiness, every doubt, every lie that seeks to diminish their faith. Grant them the wisdom and discernment to recognize the schemes of the enemy, the subtle deceptions that attempt to keep them from the power they possess through you. Holy Spirit, guide them that they may see clearly the traps that have been set and have the boldness to stand firm, knowing that you have equipped them with everything they need to overcome. Father, renew their minds. Let your truth saturate their thoughts, breaking the chains of negativity and doubt that the enemy has tried to bind them with. Remind them, Lord, that they are not defined by their past, their mistakes, or their weaknesses, but by your love and grace. Strengthen their faith that no storm, no battle, no attack can shake them. Fill them with unshakable faith, knowing that through you victory is theirs. Lord, I ask that you protect them from spiritual attacks. Cover them with your armor, shield them from the fiery arrows of the enemy, and surround them with your angels. I declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, for they are yours, and you are their defender. Father, I pray for clarity of purpose in their lives. Let them walk with certainty in the path you have laid before them, unmoved by the voices of confusion or distraction. Give them courage, Father, courage to step into the destiny you've prepared for them, to rise above the fears that seek to paralyze their progress. I pray for deliverance from the weight of condemnation, guilt, and shame. Satan may remind them of their past, but I remind them of their future in you, a future filled with hope, promise, and divine purpose. Lord, align their hearts with yours. Let them be so deeply in tune with your will that no plan by the enemy can steer them off course. Break any spiritual blindness that clouds their understanding of the authority they have in you. May they walk in the fullness of their freedom, knowing that they are not slaves to fear, doubt, or condemnation, but children of the Most High God. Father, I surrender my plans, my fears, and my desires to you. I let go of the need to control and trust that your ways are higher than mine. Remove anything in my life that hinders my relationship with you. Cleanse my heart and renew my spirit so I may walk in the fullness of your grace. Strengthen my faith, Lord, so I may trust in you fully, especially when the path is unclear. Lord, I pray for your protection today. Cover me with your hand and shield me from every danger and attack. I declare that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Surround me with your angels and keep me safe from harm. I trust in your unfailing protection and believe that you are always working for my good. I release every burden, every worry, and every fear into your hands. Lord, I choose faith over fear, and I trust in your perfect plan for my life. Strengthen my spirit so that I may stand firm in faith no matter what comes my way. Fill me with peace, knowing that you are in control. Father, I declare today that I am covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I surrender all my battles to you, knowing that you have already secured the victory. 
I release every negative thought and habit, trusting that you are transforming me from the inside out. Help me, Lord, to walk in the freedom that Jesus has purchased for me. Father, I ask for a heart of worship in each of them, that in every season, in every trial, their focus would be on your greatness, not the lies of the enemy. For we know, Lord, that worship silences the voice of the accuser and keeps us anchored in your truth. Grant them resilience, Lord, on their journey. No matter what comes against them, let them rise with renewed strength, knowing that your plan for their lives will prevail. Father, I seal this prayer in the name of Jesus, declaring that Satan's attempts to keep them from realizing who they are in you will not prosper. Your word, your power, and your truth will reign supreme in their lives. I speak freedom, I speak purpose, I speak boldness, and I speak victory over each of them today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Jesus shared in Matthew 17, 20, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Teach me to trust in your timing, Lord. I know you are never late, and I believe that every delay is for my ultimate good. Give me the patience and strength to wait for your perfect will to unfold in my life. Strengthen my heart to endure through trials and to see your hand at work even when things are difficult. Father, as I stand in faith today, I pray for those around me who also need your blessings. Bless my family, my friends, and everyone connected to me. Cover them with your grace and protect them from harm. Let your favor rest upon them and guide them in all they do. I thank you, Lord, for your endless mercy renewed every morning. When I fall short, you are there to lift me up. Help me to live in constant awareness of your love and give me the grace to show mercy to others, just as you have shown mercy to me. I ask for your healing touch, Lord. Heal my body, my mind, and my soul. Restore me to wholeness and ease any pain I may be feeling. Let your healing power flow through every part of my being. I also lift up my loved ones who are in need of healing. May your hand be upon them and bring them to complete wellness. Lord, I renounce every form of darkness that tries to enter my life. I declare that I am free from the enemy's schemes and I walk in the light of your truth. No weapon formed against me shall succeed and I stand under the protection of your mighty hand. Surround me with your angels and keep me safe from harm. I thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. I declare that I am blessed and highly favored. I ask that you open doors of opportunity for me today and grant me success in all I do. Let your blessings overflow in every area of my life and help me to use those blessings to serve others. In the name of Jesus, I plead his blood over my life, my family, my home, and my future. I declare victory over every challenge, knowing that through Christ I am more than a conqueror. Thank you for hearing my prayer and for answering it in your perfect way. I give this day to you, Lord. I offer my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I know that you love me. I know that you hold me in the palm of your hand. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you think this message can comfort and inspire others, please like and share this video with your friends and family. Together we can spread the message of faith, love, and hope to those who are suffering.